if you have a 3018 CNC, I'm pretty sure you're going to like this video. Stable, an inexpensive, less than $10 way to completely stabilize the Z assembly. Because I'm surprised just how much these guys bend. But um, someplace towards the end of the video, I mentioned that my dream of expanding it out 500 millimeters went in the trash can. Not really. I did find um, on Banggood, I'll put links in the description, to a two star a T8 500 millimeter lead screw that was an X2 to start so every revolution would give you four millimeters but uh, Banggood is loaded with regular T8 single start 500 millimeter lead screws and I forgot what I did but I went and looked at the settings that I would have to change the Gerbil settings and right now for the existing lead screw which is a two start I'm at 1,600 steps per whatever millimeter or something like that. So I'd have to cut it in half if I got a regular T8, which is 800. And I did document the default settings that came with my machine when I first got it. And lo and behold, the default is 800. So I have a feeling this machine was originally shipped with a standard single start T8 lead screw. And further thinking about it, that would really speed the machine up even more. That would be not double, you know, <laughs> with, with the speed of these motors, steppers. So, I uh, hope you enjoy. <laughs> Without further ado, here's the video. Can't tell you how much I really like this machine. It's, it's a great little machine. Um, easy to use. Free CAD. It's really simple. <clears throat> CAD program and the Universal G Code Center, easy to talk to it. Can do a lot of things with this guy. They're also available everywhere it's Amazon, eBay, um, Sane, Smart, you name it, Banggood. But there's two problems. One is this flexes. And because of that, I have to go real slow. Uh, here's a sample video of it running and that's making an ER32 collet holder and I had to do it in three sections because the second limitation is the size of the table. So what I was thinking trying to do to strengthen this is I already made part of it here. This guy's going to go on the inside here and bolt to the back of this. The two rails will be gone and oh, nut came off. This lower piece that that piece down here is going to drop and that'll hold it and it slides real easy no play there should be you know these aren't going to flex so if this works my next step is I got to pull the whole head out and drill all the holes to attach it um, I can also depending upon where I drill the holes raise or lower this I don't want to go any lower but if this does work and it's solid that allows me to replace, for just under $100, I can replace all these pieces that these guys with 500 millimeter. That would add <clears throat> five more inches to this table. It comes out over 19 inches. But I did some checking. This is 12 and I'll be adding five. So that's a pretty good size table, 15 inches. I could leave this plate in place. I could put something else on top of it. Or replace it with like three-quarter MDF or something to the right size. Um, so I got to figure out too what I want to do with the table because I may have to raise this. But I'll have these pieces spare, so I could replace the vertical pieces here taller. You know, I can just raise the whole thing up, even though it's poking way up, till it's where I want, and then cut them if I want to do that. So, and then I may branch out into CAMBAM at some time, um, see what that program is. It's supposed to be easy and a little bit better than FreeCAD, so $150 though. We'll see. Uh, they have a nice long trial period on it. So, onward. Alright, next I'll just pull this apart, 
bring you guys back when uh, got something to run and do. So far, it's looking very promising. I mean, this is tight in here. I'm not getting any movement any place. So, and I did put the rails back in with the head and marked it inside here. So I'm raising the whole Z-axis up 100, maybe 150 thousandths. Uh, I will have to print the 3D box to hold the board because it's the new spacing now and put the fan on top so it's looking very promising here um, so now it's just a matter of drilling out the head and figure out even numbers for the DRO so I can match it on this guy the entire pattern all right well let's see what happens <laughs> Okay, I'm not going to show really much more of where I'm going to go from here, but just to give you guys an update, a lot of spare parts here, and all this came off. This guy has to stay because it's the limit switch, but this does not move here. I don't see anything in the plate, but what I'm seeing is I cannot turn this wheel by hand, but I can turn this one. So i got to take it all apart. There's play in the holes so I got to make sure all the screws are in the same position to get rid of that little play because I can turn this one down here by hand but not that one so uh, and I do see a little bit of play here on this bottom corner it is a lot more solid but what I'm seeing is this this is moving here uh, if this moves I can easily put a big steel plate across the back um, the pros they do attach it on the side so I could come up with a plate or something here to stiffen this up here um, what else I did run it under machine power and it works pretty nice so um, everything lines up everything's great Amazon does sell a Y extension kit which gives you like six and a half more inches. The problem is it's an eight millimeter, two millimeter pitch to start, which means the thread is, there's two threads on there. So uh, one revolution gives you four millimeters worth of travel. I didn't measure it. I cannot find an eight millimeter to start lead screw anywhere. There's an eight millimeter one start which means one revolution is going to give me eight millimeters worth of travel so my idea of extending this whole thing is now in the trash can but uh, sixty dollars I can get the pro y-axis extension which would help quite a bit um, what else here to say uh, pretty thrilled with it I uh, know it has got to be more solid than it was before because these, I, I don't know, because you're on these bearings. This does not bend. So I'm wondering if this whole time, i got to measure and see if this bends. Yeah, that's bending. Is it? I don't know. I can't tell. Put it on something. Yeah, that's, that's bending. Okay, so that's a problem right there. That's, that bends easily. So, I'm surprised it bends that easily, jeez. So this has to be more solid. Like I said, I can put a steel plate. <coughs> I am gonna print a 3D box to try to protect this more. Probably flip the fan around so it blows out rather than on the circuitry. I haven't even looked at it to see how dirty it's gotten. Yeah, there's a lot of dust all over it, so great. I have to clean that up so that's where I am uh, I probably will buy the Y extension kit and do what I can to stiffen all the other pieces up and fine-tune this thing I did put the machinist jack in here because you can really push this thing down and hold it while you lock it down so that's it folks if you really want to you know work on your machine here's an idea okay it's all back together Sorry, there's not a whole lot of light here or angles, but 
I'm just doing a test run. It, I did manage to double the speed. I need to look at some of the settings as to retweak the machine. Vibrations are significantly less too. Well, here it goes. I haven't really set the Z to zero correctly, but it's ripping. You have slight vibration from the motor balance here. See what happens when it hits. Just about the same. No, a little bit more. Be interesting to try it up on some metal and see what happens. But it's working nice. I'm sure there is an improvement, especially since I can double this speed like this. Yeah, it's a lot faster than it used to be. Alright, I'll just play around some more. <laughs> 